Hello everybody and welcome back to game two of this best of three series for the quarterfinals of the Abyssal League. We've got Bangkok Ball Westers, we've got Vicious Hunger, and so far the BBB side has taken the lead with a sweeping 1-0 in game one. And Andrew, what does VH need to do to come back in this game two? Well, VH definitely need to switch up something. It seems as though, in my opinion, the real fault came from that jungle pick. I think that they were fine to go for the Talia, really want that early pressure, but what it came down to is that as soon as she got put behind, she was never given a way back in. So I, what I want to see from Vicious Hunger this time around is a different pick. You know, this doesn't have to be, you know, doesn't have to be something, you know, that's carry oriented, but just something that can influence lanes. Because for what is supposed to be kind of more of a carry jungler, a fast clear, someone who wants to go and gank lane with a seismic shove, it really didn't happen. And this time around, they need to have some kind of lane influence because that lack of lane influence, especially when BBB took mostly winning lanes, that was what was their downfall, in my opinion, for the most part. Yeah, definitely. As we're starting to see the first couple bans coming out, they're sticking with the Yasuo ban. It'll be interesting to see if they decide to ban out anything differently. Um, comp wise, do you think they're going with a similar comp? Do you think even ba Bangkok Ballbusters go with the same comp? I think that Bangkok Ball Buses are fine to keep to keep their bands. I think that I think you know the way they played last game, the way that they held themselves. I think that they're fine. I think that what needs to happen this time around is that it, it, is that you know I think that on the side of Vicious Hunger, you know, is that I don't think their first round bands actually matter that much. I think if they keep the same first round bands, I think that's fine. What I want to see is the adaptation in the second round. I think that you know yeah. last time last time not picking their top laner within that first rotation kind of set them behind. They were able to ban out the Scion and kind of set a bad matchup. I think that as long as they can get the better bands in that second matchup, you know, target their mid laner a bit more. You know, target these picks that you know they're going that you know that Duck Solo is going to go through. It's going to be very kind of solo carry focused. So. I think in, I think you know I think that, that keeping the same first bands would be fine, but it's how they add up how, how they adapt in the second half that's really going to determine the pace of this game. Yeah, definitely. Well, in this first half, we're getting into the picks, and we see the Urgot being hovered for Great Jason. Man, that was impactful in the first game. Yeah, he really had a good handle on that top lane. He knew he knew how to get the Orn's number, how to really be in his face, and really kind of play that matchup the way it's supposed to be. And that was with the Sejuani, which is a bit more of a low impact early game going for. So I think that he's fine to keep the Urgot, but I really want to see the adaptation on Vicious, on Vicious Hunger. You know, what are they going to pick up? It looks like, let's say they're going to start with their bot lane and starting with the Morgana, which is definitely not a bad pick, you know, especially last time, you know, when you were against the Alistar and you had, sorry, when you had the Alistar, it was really easy to kind of, you know, go in and combo. And Morgana's kind of the opposite. They're kind of saying, okay, We'll play a bit farther back and this caitlin does kind of orient that they're trying to say let us be the longer range let us be the one to kind of poke down decide when the fights start not really try to be the one jumping in into this kind of large counter engage comp that bbb had previously yeah definitely so with the bot lane locked in from vicious hunger what do you think we can expect out of bangkok all busters are they going to go with the same thing i mean well actually you know what we're seeing the alistar picked up here so well, do you think they go with the same ADC, however? I don't think that you would go with the same ADC. I don't believe so. I think, I think that with the Caitlyn, if you were to go the Kai'Sa, it's a much longer range into short range matchup, and it really could dictate the lane a bit more and kind of lose the pressure they had last time. This Jin pick, I do like it. I think that Jin has a slightly longer range. I think that with the Alistar, it's very easy into the Deadly Flourish with the Headbutt Pulverize. I think it's still a good combo, and I think that at least against the Kate Morg, that it can it can contend pretty well. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that bot lane plays out. I, I definitely feel like this bot lane is much more in favor of Vicious Hunger compared to the last game. Uh, the last game, I felt like it could have gone either way based on how they play it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I feel like Morgana is just such a power pick. And that no matter how well Cardi plays this Alistar in the bot lane, <laughs> they're going to struggle if Morgana is even halfway competent. Yeah, not yeah, not to mention the support of the support of Vicious Hunger has shown 
a lot of kind of preference on that Morgana. She has shown that she really does like, that. well, he or she really does like that champion. So I think that's a really good pickup for them. In fact, that was able to go through. And like I said, it's kind of long range on long range. You know, the Tormented Soil has a really good cast range. The Binding, obviously, one of the hardest CCs and one of the longest CCs in the game. And then Caitlyn, you know, with those headshots, with that, you know, you know, with her ace in the hole ultimate, with nets, they can really play this bot lane and really kind of play more for the bit of poke for the later game and just kind of keep the other bot lane down. I really give them a chance to stay even like they had last time. And then let's try to look at these other bands. So it seems as though we have Aurelia and Syndra on the side of Bangkok Ballbusters, and then the Akali taken away from Bangkok on the side of Vicious Hunger, as well as that Sejuani. So really trying to not allow Bangkok at any kind of comfort, making their mid laner and jungler kind of get on new picks this game, kind of change their comp as well. Yeah, definitely. And I do have to say that we have put the champ select on pause currently because they did have a uh, connection issue and so the the lobby did drop out they didn't get to finish up all their pick bands so we are going to take just a little quick break we're going to throw it back to intermission and we'll come back in shortly once they kind of get caught back up and we're back into the champ select and everything so stay tuned and we'll be back with you just just a moment
All right, guys, we are back. After the events unfolding, we are getting back into the champ select, and we've got two more picks left up for the two champions. Andrew, I cut you off a little bit while you were talking about the vans. They did manage to change them up a little bit with this second round, so how, how do you feel about the adaptation? Well, I think the real question is going to be, you know, how do they decide to play this out? Because now, you know, with the Aurelia and the Akali both banned, those are two of the more common, you know, assassin-y mid laner picks. So now the game might shift into a bit more of, you know, maybe a bit more control mage, maybe a bit more, you know, you know, supporty. We really need to see how these teams want to play out. I think it would be good if Vicious Hunter maybe would go for a more supporty mid laner, you know, because when you look at their at their last game, Gummy Balls was the one who was able to stay ahead, keep himself on track, and, you know, really contend with Viper Fang. I think the real, I think you want to kind of, you know, promote that. You want to give him a chance to be the carry, be the late game scaling that they might need to pull out a win. And I think that right now it's going to come down to, you know, how they decide to really counter these picks on Bangkok Ballbusters. And right now with the Trundle pick, I really do like that into the enemy Cho'Gath. Really going to take away a lot of that max health, a lot of those resistances, because he really will be the sole tank of this team, at least as of right now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Urgot, he'll be all right. Um, the Hellstar, you know, you can never out. You can never put him out, especially if the bot lane does play well, but... Oh, so, sorry, did you say the Cho'Gath or the Trundle? I might be losing my mind here a little bit. <laughs> so, so what I was originally saying is that the Trundle is really a good pick into the Cho'Gath, because he can right. take that okay. subjugate, take a lot of the Cho'Gath, especially with Cho'Gath, you know, you know, with that Carnivore, really keeping him healthy. I think that the Cho'Gath is a good adaptation. I think the Cho'Gath changing into the Urgot, you know, he has a little bit of heal from the Carnivore, and eventually later on Beast Tech. I think he has more of a chance to really contend with Urgot, and not necessarily just have an easy laning phase like with the Ornn. And then, the, but the Trundle adaptation is really good into the Cho'Gath, and then an Echo and a Vladimir. I have to say, I don't think I've seen either of those champions in the middle, especially in matching up together in a long time. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the top lane matchup goes, especially after seeing how in the first game there, Telios did play pretty well. Um, he didn't do too bad in terms of the first like pre-level six. But once Great Jace hit that level 6 fresh threshold, and once he started to get just the tiniest bit of team support, it just, Telios just kind of tipped over and fell apart. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And then we got to mention the, the junglers. Who, who do you think is really going to come out ahead in terms of the Trundle versus the Xin Zhao? Well, they're both obviously, you know, very auto attack based junglers, but I think the real thing is that the Xin Zhao does have that bit more of gank pressure, you know, the, 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 you know, you know with the audacious charge and with the knock up on three point strike. So it will be interesting to see maybe if the Zin goes for a bit more gank heavy while the Trunnel goes for a bit more, you know, a bit more, um, you know, farm heavy. But the other thing is that when you look at the Trundle into these matchups, he doesn't really have any easy gank opportunities. You, you know, great Jace in, in, you know, you know into, T, into Telos, it really does seem like that Urgot's going to be pushing ahead. So top lane probably won't be a good point of gank contention. Over in mid lane, trying to gank a Vladimir with nothing more than a pillar will definitely be an issue. And over in the bot lane, it's such long range in the Caitlyn Morgana that, again, even a single pillar, it's going to be hard with how far back they're already going to be. That is going to be really difficult for him, in my opinion, to impact these lanes. Whereas in Zhao, you know, you know the Urgot's going to be pushed. You know you can get something on the Echo, even with his small dash in, in the phase dash. And then Jin and Alistar, at least the Jin is very immobile. So I think that, that you know, Vicious Hunger has taken their draft and said we want to more gank opportunities, but it's going to depend if he can actually manage to take the time, find the right ways in, and really pull it off. Yeah, man, I don't think I could have said it better myself. So as we look into the game, we're going to have Vicious Hunger now here on the red side. We're going to have Bangkok Ballbusters stomping in on the blue side. It'll be interesting to see... I don't know, how, do you believe in the blue side being better? I feel like with Bangkok already picking up that win on the red side, it's going to make this game all the more easier for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do certainly I do certainly believe in the first pick opportunity that, you know, both you know, both times getting this Urgot, and I think that, you know, if they were on red side this game, it's entirely possible. Vicious Hunger would have said, it's our turn to take the Urgot, our turn to kind of give our top lane more of the advantage, but it seems like they were content with the Urgot into tank matchup, or at the very least, they know that they might have some extra late game pressure but again that's going to require them to not give up so much in the early game and not let bbb have the chance to snowball 
Yeah, definitely. We saw Vicious Hunger here in the bot lane. They were looking to try to make something happen. They came in as the five man. Unfortunately, they had Viper Fang just chilling in the river. He was ready for it. So not too much going to play out here in the top lane. It'll be interesting to see. They did get this ward here on the enemy red. Ooh, Duck Solo is walking into them, though. He is, but man, they don't. They don't have the CC to lock him down, you know. They don't have a Thresh. They don't have Morgana up there. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, well, to be fair, on the mini map, it looked a little bit closer than on the screen. Yeah, totally. I, I, I can understand that. So it'll be interesting to see. You mentioned last game that on the side of Vicious Hunger, Denali, who's now playing the Zinjiao, would have had a much better game, much better start at least, if he'd started opposite side of Bliss on his Sejuani. They are starting the opposite sides in this game. Do you think that's going to benefit Denali too very much? Well, I think that in the last game it was a bit of a different story because, you know, it was more of a carry into tank matchup. You know, there was more opportunities to kind of really bully the other jungler. But this time around, you know, Trundle, is Trundle, especially into another auto-attack jungler, is one of the best jungle skirmishers you can have. Because, you know, if Zin really does want to lock onto the Trundle, as soon as he chomps, lowers that AD, and gets more himself, it really does kind of become his, his skirmish to have. So I think right now it's actually obviously they really want to stay away from each other. It seems like... They're both looking to possibly invade the other's jungle, at least, or at least both taking the individual scuttle crabs on their starting side. Yeah, and you mentioned the scuttle crabs, so they're both getting their own individual ones. We do see Bliss coming into the blue buff, though. He's thinking about stealing it? Did he actually start it? It's kind of hard to tell from this angle. <laughs> yes, he is doing it. I can see his man at health bar jumping around a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, team, yeah, really good, really good map knowledge to pressure into their jungler, really take this buff, and it seems as if, ooh, Denali just short of seeing that. Yeah, he's, uh, he's gonna be a little upset because he does have this, oh, well, no, he didn't have the smite available just yet, it's just now coming back up, so. He wouldn't have been able to smite steal, but maybe he jumps in there with his E, his little dash. Yeah, but over here in the mid lane, and then, ooh, ooh. there we go. That's a great pillar, man. I didn't know that could go through the pool like that. False Prophet, he's going to survive, but he did have to burn his flash there. And he's going to have to burn that teleport pretty early on, unless he stays in lane like he is currently. Nope, there he goes. Yeah, it seems as if Bliss is making me eat my words before. Like I was saying, I didn't think the Vladimir would be a really good gank target with the pool, but but you have to admit, it was a really good execution. He didn't use the pillar early. He didn't, you know, give the Vlad a chance maybe pull through and avoid the slow. He waited until he saw the pool use. He got him range with the Frozen Domain and, you know, you know, was able to get a flash out of the Vladimir. And, you know, it was traded for the Ignite of Duck solo, but, you know, especially with that lower Summoner's cooldown, I think you would take an Ignite trade for a flash any day. I'm interested to see how this bot lane is going to play out. I really haven't seen a Caitlyn in the last three or four patches, man. It, it feels like it's been a little while. How about you? Yeah, I can't say I've seen it often. Oh, wait, hallway, but over in the mid lane again. Yeah, False Prophet. Luckily, he has that pool because he does not have that flash available. And Bliss, full knowledge that he does not have that flash available. So he's looking to take advantage of it. Yeah, that was that kind of preemptive use of pool that I was talking about earlier. You know, that time he waited for the pillar to come out because without without Bliss's Wrath Smite, you know, there really is no way for him to really get on to the Vladimir once he gets that auto attack down. Before he had still the red smite tick, sorry, the, uh, the red buff, I mean. The red buff ticking, he was able to keep it slowed down, and that's why he was able to wait out the frozen the frozen pillar. But in that particular sense, you know, as soon as he uses that pillar, False Prophets knows he can W right through it, avoid the slow of the pillar, and then it's very easy to get back to tower. So he does have that safety net now while Bliss doesn't have a red buff, but that can only last for so long. Right, right. And so far, I mean, this game kind of starting off a little bit like the last game. It really wasn't too crazy for the first couple minutes here, but as our junglers are getting close to that level 6 mark, well, I say getting close, Denali's still at level 3, uh, and Bliss only at 4, but as, as the teams start getting close to that level 6 mark, It'll be interesting to see how they're able to focus their macro gameplay because I feel like that was the big thing that pulled BBB so far ahead in the last game. 
Yeah, I think the big change already, honestly, more so, in the, you know, more so than like the different picks. I think it actually comes from the top side. It seems like Tilios is a bit more comfortable with the Cho matchup into Urgot as opposed to last time on the horn. You know, you know the Urgot can't be quite as aggressive because you know you have the Feral Scream, you have the Rupture, you have a few more immediate tools to kind of make him back off you. And right now, you know, even even on CS, even on lane pressure, kept in the middle of the lane. So it seems like top lane's have better at a time. And then over in the bot lane, it's a small CS lead, but it is building up as I believe the wave is still crashing into them and then at the moment you know it's like i said they're at, at a very long range they don't have to get up get up, get up close the alice doesn't really have a lot of chances to go for that head up overized combo that at least right now this lane's looking heavily in favor of vicious hunger yeah it's it's gonna be a challenge for them and i feel like trundle it, it's gonna be a challenge for him to really find a way into this lane to have an impact the good thing about it is he's not a jungler that relies on the CC that can be blocked by Morgana, that pillar will still be able to provide some CC for a gank here. But I, it's going to be tough. They're going to have to use some summoners. I think Cardi's going to have to look for some kind of flash engage at some point with the Trundle matchup to be able to make something work. And they're going to have to go on to both of them because you don't know which one Morgana is going to try to shield. Yeah, that's true. And I do think at this point, you know, it seems like Bliss is kind of aware of that. You know, he's gone for the Tiamat. It seems like he's going for a bit more damage or a bit more, you know, clear, heavy path. You know, I think that I think that he recognized that, you know, the only real lane that he has another chance to gank is that mid lane. And at least right now, you know, False Prophet's hitting, hitting the level 6. He has a teleport available. He has Predator up. You know, he's not as easy of a gank target at least right now. And I think that I think that Bliss recognized that. So, all right, I'll get the Tiamat. I'll farm up a bit more. I'll wait until more at that mid-game point when I can get a bit more off the Subjugate. And my laners have a bit more that can help me out with ganking. I think at least right now, they're in a very good spot. Yeah, no, I feel like this is a team comp style that BBB can feel very comfortable with farming up. At the same time, I feel like this is a better style for Vicious Hunger as well. I kind of like the spread that they've got. I like the way they're playing their champions so far. Um, it, it's just going to be really interesting to see what happens in this mid game once we finally see this first clash. Once we finally see a lead start to develop somewhere. Yeah, it really does seem as though Vicious Hunger is kind of, you know, trying to play a bit more towards that bot lane. You know, I think they recognized that the last game that, you know, Gummy Balls had, has the ability to stay even, stay ahead, knock up any early advantages. I think they're kind of saying, you know, that they want to rely on him a bit more. They want to give oh, him the Oh, there's the engage out of Cardi, and he doesn't have the headbutt, but he does get the lockdown, and Verinda does manage to flash out before too much damage goes down. But now we've got the Knight. root landing on Cardi. He is going to get healed up. Is the Ignite going to take him down? No, he's going to go down to about 100 health. But luckily he was prepared. Luckily Viper was ready to save his buddy. And now Bliss going for the tower dive. I don't know if he wants this one. And especially with Zin Zhao wrapping around. And now he might be the first blood. He oh, coming through. The teleport is coming through. But Bliss is going to go down here to Denali. And now Denali gets to be on the upper hand for the first time in the series. <laughs> and the fight continues, man. I wanted to stop after that comment. I thought it was so good. <laughs> but another two kills falling in the bot lane, man. Alistar and Viper Fang dropping here. And so Vicious Hunger, it's their chance. Yeah, throwing a lot of help towards that bot lane. Really trying to give Gummy Balls the opportunity. You know, they saw they were pushed in, saw they bot zone, and they committed everything down there. And it really did show, you know, it worked out really, really well for them. And this is their chance to get into this game. I really think it will come down to this bot lane, you know, with gummy balls, with getting a CS lead, getting a kill, lead, getting a pressure lead. And now with this added Earth Drake, I think that Vicious Hunger are really saying, you know, that we need to turn we need to turn around the early game. We waited out a little bit longer. I think that last time they got a little bit over eager. They had a lot of kind of early engages to early skirmishes. This time they said, let's wait, let's scale up, let's let let's get a few items, get a bit more pressure, and now they're in the lead. Yeah, and with Duck Solo now taking a lot of damage from Denali, I want to mention you said the word overeager, and I feel like Bliss right there, he was so confident. He played such a good game in game one. I feel like he was just a little overeager to get his team ahead there and made a little bit of a mistake that costed his team three kills there in the bot lane. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like I said earlier, you know, you know, I'm sure that looking at their comp, looking at their lanes, you know, it's really hard for Bliss to get a good gank off. So I think, you know, he saw the low bottom laners and he thought, you know, I can go right through the enemy jungle. I can get right in there and knock them up and try to get some damage. But I think I, I think that he underestimated, you know, that, you know, he started off Tiamat. He didn't build the Cinder Hulk yet. He's not building any kind of health or armor right now that he can't really tank turret shots yet. 
you know, at this point, you know, he's still very squishy with just a team at the red smite. And even then, he didn't even have the red smite yet. Not that it gives him any more health or anything, but until he kind of has a bit more items under his belt, he can't be one to dive like that, especially into what is a very easy to land Morgana Binding or Caitlyn Trap. Yeah, and I've got to tell you guys, those people listening in right now, Bliss and Great Jace confided us early in the game. Well, sorry, we gotta we gotta put that on pause because Cardi is going in for a fight here after he gets out of that route and Verinda going low. really low. Viper, I don't know why he turned around for a minute there. Now Gummy might get a kill on Alistar. He's gonna try to force the kill before he goes down. But actually, Viper, holy crap, that damage! And now he drops. He's gonna oh. get the one kill on the Caitlyn from the bouncing grenade. But in the top lane, Great Jace is able to pick up the first kill with the help of Duck Solo. And so across the map, a two for two, but. Man, uh, that was a little bit of disorganization was, in the bot lane. It was super close in the bot lane for Viper Fang and Gummy Ball. Viper Fang getting out that last bouncing grenade right before the ace in the hole was just enough damage of what he needed to kill Gummy Balls, and it wasn't a trade. But over here in the mid lane, we get this first hurt and. Almost a kill. <laughs> <laughs> Almost but a kill onto Denali. Hopefully, they're going to get. No, they're going to go ahead and back off. Uh, back to the point. Great Jace, Bliss, they confided us before the game. They had already bet some money down onto this matchup. They already put some money down on Vicious Hunger going to the semifinals. So, uh, I hate to say it, but I think maybe Bliss was playing the throw game there a little bit. Maybe, you know, he meant it to look unintentional there on the bot lane. Little dive, but I, I don't know, man. I'm a little skeptical. I know better than him. Man, I think man, I think they think Abyss League is gone this far downhill. <laughs> Just when I thought I had seen it all. Where were you on the day when Bliss solo entered the game? No, I yeah. I I think I had a high respect for him for a long time, but hopefully maybe he's gonna have second thoughts. Maybe he'll decide, hey man, my team They've, they've really worked hard throughout this split. Maybe I need to just sacrifice the money I've bet and try to actually win here. So yeah, we'll, right. we'll see. He's going for the gank here in the mid lane. He does land a nice pillar. The false Prophet holding on to the pool for the moment. Actually, I don't know if he even has it off the cooldown right now. He might have used it in lane, but that's going to be a lot of damage on the Bliss. And he's just not the tank yet as the kill comes through for both Echo and Zen, and now False Prophets is going to take a lot of damage. I think Duck Solo is going to pick up the double here. And Cho'Gath, I don't think you want to be walking in here, man. Telios, he's going really low. The knockup does not land on either of these members of Bangkok. And unfortunately, Great Jace missing the ultimate. The flash out of Telios. The flash forward from Duck Solo. Oh my gosh. He gets the kill. <laughs> that was beautifully executed by Bangkok Ballbuster. Duck Solo really putting on the carry pants, really wanted to be the one to put his team ahead, using that chrono break, using that flash stand on, on Telus, and really, really making an impact. But with Great Jace coming in, getting the, I believe it's called the Mize, getting that knock up and that knock back on Cho'Gath, it really is just setting an impressive to this lane. And over in this bot lane, yeah. Nubby Balls is starting to scale up. He's really starting to show just how much damage he can do once he gets a few items under his belt. Yeah, well, both players here got the Storm Razor picked up, and I mean, I have to say, throughout the series so far, I feel like Great Jace is the highlight matchup in terms of the difference in uh, skill levels, because, or, or sorry, not I don't want to say skill levels, in the difference of um, how they're playing right now, because so far, he's done a much better job of getting ahead on these fights. But Xin Zhao now coming into the bot lane right as Morgana starts up a fight with her ultimate. And Xin Zhao is actually knocked back into the ultimate of Jin there. They do get one kill, but in what are they going to get out of this? Or got teleporting down, and Bliss is now down here. It's going to be a full five man fight as Echo picks up the first kill of it. And now we've got Cho'Gath just right here in the middle. He does manage to get the chomp down on Echo. And I think this is going to turn in favor of Vicious Hunger as Great Jace and Bliss are trying to run away. Bliss is able to flash out, but Great Jace is not as lucky. Man, this game really quickly turned into quite the fiesta. You got to you gotta say, you know, with all these teleports, all these plays, but at the end of the day, it does seem as though Vicious Hunger came out on top. You know, it's like at the end, what was that? What was that a one for two at the end? No, no, it was more than that. I think it was, I think it was one no, for four. Yeah, it was maybe either one for four or one for... Well, I think it's one for four now, actually, with that one going down. Maybe it yeah. was... Ah, man, I'm losing track. 
<laughs> Let's look at the overall score. Let's look at the fact that it's 7-11 now. We've got the first tower that went down was actually in favor of Bangkok Ballbusters in the mid lane. Uh, but they are getting a return tower here, and they are up about 1k gold at this point, and they're looking for their second dragon now. Yeah, yeah, it really does seem as though the second dragon really put them ahead, you know. Dragon not really saying much towards gold lead, but it does say a lot towards objective lead, towards pressure lead. And, you know, it may only be a 1.2k gold lead, but to be even on towers and even on dragons, this is vastly different from last game, where I want to say by this point, Bangkok Bulbas was already about maybe 7k gold ahead with two dragons and, like, four towers. So it's at least showing, you know, you know they, they learned from last game. They said, okay, we're not going to rush ahead. We're not going to try to force anything crazy. Let's let the game go. Let's scale up a little bit. Let's play more scaling comp. And now, at least right now, it seems to be doing well for them so far in this mid game, or it's soon to be mid game. Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned the difference between this game and last game. One big difference was the fact that once Bangkok Ballbusters got a lead, it really started to spiral out of control quickly for them. And although Vicious Hunger is playing really well, they're playing much better than they played last game, Bangkok Ballbusters is still very much in this game. And it definitely shows a little bit of a difference of the playstyles that the the, well, for the team comps that they picked up this game. And now Telios, man, he's getting caught out once again, and he's going to get suppressed and destroyed by Great Jace here in the bot lane. He tried to get the fear on a Denali, but the rest of the team was like, nah, let's, let's, let's take the one kill and back off. Yeah, really, 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 really close there for, for Telos. Almost even making it out quite, but, you know, that fear beyond death, that pullback, really a big tool in this game. And... You know, when you really do look at this game, the other thing to point out is that at the very least, the the story for Bangkok Baba seems to a little bit seems to be kind of the same. You know, great Jasha holding his own. You know, nothing crazy. He's not super far ahead, but he's pretty even. And besides Bliss, maybe falling down a little bit, Duck Solo still really showing that he can kind of you know be a bit of the solo carry, trying to stick to that name. You know, right now four and one and one on this Echo, even in farm with the Vladimir and. You know, I think he's really trying to show that he can be enough to really draw pressure. But as much as he may draw pressure, you know, getting this top lane uh, outer turret perhaps after this, the real question is, can he be enough to really, you know, distract Vicious Hunger? Or are they kind of more on this bot lane oriented game that seems to be leading them to a bit more success? It's definitely going to be interesting to focus on the Echo a little bit in this game, especially considering he was one of the priority bans in the first series, or first game of the series. But Morgana looking for the bind and the ult on the Bliss. He is going to get the lockdown on one, but they didn't realize the rest of Bangkok was here and close by. They are going to get one kill. Echo picking up the first one as Gummy Bulls is now in danger of dying, and he goes down to the double kill of Duck Solo. And now they're on the chase. False Prophet is going to get headbutt pulverized before the Morgana shield can come out. And that's going to spell his death as the suppression comes in from Urgot. And Verinda, I don't think he's going to be able to walk out of this quick enough as Duck Solo, he wants blood, man. He just dove in there and the great Jace following through with a flash. That's going to be four. Are they going to get five? I think Telos is just a little too strong. It's a little too tanky. Yeah, great Jace on this Urgot, really, really showing some mastery of this champion, knowing when to go in, landing that fear beyond death in those critical moments as the target might just get away. And as of right now, you know, just as before we were saying, you know, hey, Vicious Hunger, they're getting in, they're making these kind of lower impact plays, they're trying to really play it more methodical. They, you know, Ver Verinda on this Morgana, making, you know, after missing the binding and kind of missing that play on the trundle, really trying to go in a bit too deep for what maybe she had the availability to, and all that's really doing is leaving them in more disadvantage where it just gets more and more in favor of Bangkok. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, like I said, they're, they're still much in a much better position than Vicious Hunger was in the previous game. Uh, and, and I mean, realistically, I think that Vicious Hunger still has a very good chance. If they can find a way to play their comp right, I think they need to be looking a little bit more at the picks and, and making sure that they have the vision to make those picks because that's what really went wrong in that last team fight. Yeah, I think the last team fight was both a combination of some bad vision. At the same time, it seems like Gummy Balls was just out of position that entire last fight. And right yeah, now, but new fight breaking out. Duck Solo happened to use his ult to get out of there and get some health back. And Verinda wanted the pick off to the side, but nothing's going to happen there. 
Yeah, and you can see just the power of what Gummy Balls is kind of attracting in those fights. You know, even you know, even with just a Storm Razor and a Zeal, they were able to take that Echo down really far, you know, and really kind of exert some pressure. And I think that when Gummy Balls is in the right position, when the team kind of revolves around him, that's when they can win these fights. But they're going to have those disjointed events like previously in the river. That's going to be where Bangkok can really kind of redirect their focus and just kind of wait for Gummy Balls with a bit less protection. I'm anxious to see Gummy Balls' damage in a fight where he's allowed to sit here and auto attack because I mean like I mentioned earlier I haven't seen Kate recently I don't think she's gonna be able to hold up to the Jin even though he's four three and four on her he's doing a decent job with CS I feel like Jin is just gonna out damage and plus the safety of using that curtain call in the middle of a fight is it, just I, I don't know it's gonna be interesting man well, Jin definitely has more pressure in that sense. I don't, I don't disagree with you at all. I think that Jin has the capability to output more damage than the Caitlyn, but I think that the question is going to be how far extended to these fights go. I think that if a fight extends long enough, you know, Jin has a few reloads. He kind of has a bit, you know, lesser and lesser of a front line as the fight goes on. I personally think that Vicious Hunter, in a more extended fight, will win every single time they have the shoal shackles on the morgana the hemo plague on the vladimir increasing that damage of the whole team the zin knock up the the rupture from the choga i think that they have tools for longer and more extended fights where if they can get to that point gummy balls can sit in the back line and just wait for his teams to land their various cc and really deal some damage but i think if the fights are as quick as they have been then definitely bangkok balls has the advantage yeah, definitely. And it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I really highlighted the macro play of Bangkok Ballbusters in the first game. We are seeing them finally position up for the first drag for them in this game. And it'll be interesting to see what they can manage to do as Gummy Bull is getting hard engaged by Great Jace here. And he's going to go down before his team even gets a chance to respond. And uh, that's going to be dangerous. Bangkok Ballbusters now have a massive advantage over them. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like I said before, it's all, it all comes down to Gummy Ball's positioning. And I have to wonder what, it seems like he's off his game this time, compared to the last time. Last time, you know, last time, you know, on the, on the, I believe he was on the Twitch last game, if I remember correctly. You know, he was very methodical, he knew where he was going, he wasn't going into anything risky. And this time, maybe the bit of a longer reign is going to be a false sense of security, because he's putting himself in these bad positions where no one in his team is around him, no black shield, no front line, that he's uh, really easy to dive against second. What? Did you see that? Verinda and Viper just walking side by side there for a minute in the bush, and now Verinda, he's gonna pay for not landing that binding on Jim when he had the chance. False Prophet running away, might get ulted here. Is the pillar gonna come through? It did not manage to land, but the curtain call comes through. Will he be able to land the last hit? He does land a hit, and Telios now getting engaged on a nice flip back from Great Jace. He is gonna be able to output the damage here shortly. Actually, Viper Fang coming in and picking up the last kill there. Or last shot, rather. And that's gonna be a two for, or sorry, three for zero in favor of Bangkok Ballbusters. And just like that, man, the momentum is flipped. Yeah, Great Jace, again, on this Urgot, really showing that he knows where to move, how to move, how to be a proper frontline, and you, you have to admit that in these fights, you have to wonder what's going on with Vicious Hunger. It seems as though, it seems as though, you know, they just kind of leave themselves in these bad positions and just leave themselves open to things like this. And, ooh, wait, hold oh, on. Oh man, talk about leaving yourself open to things. <laughs> Cardi leaving himself open to the binding out of Verinda. And, uh, yeah, you might want to just back out with your team next time. Well, well, two of them did back in that same position. I think Cardi just started the back a little bit later. He was just a bit slower than the rest. But, you know, back to my original point, it just seems as though Bangkok is winning these fights purely by better positioning. They're waiting for Vicious Hunger, for someone to move it too far forward or the rest of the team to move back. And it's really easy for them to kind of focus a single target with that, you know, with that echo, with that, you know, three hit passive, you know, with the trundle, with the pillar and the auto attacks and with the Jin even that deadly flourish. It's just, they have a lot of pick potential and right now if vicious hunger is going to keep having the same pattern of someone moving too far forward at a given moment all it does is give bangkok ball buses the chance to constantly make this one pick and then just dominate the rest of the fight yeah definitely i want to go back to highlighting the jungle matchup if i get a chance because duck solo wants to go ham on denali but denali had a much better start to this game compared to the previous game uh, hey, you know, he's actually able to look like he was having an input as we go into a pause here for a moment. But 
I, I, I mean, he is still doing really well, but I think we're hitting the point where Trundle is now able to not only out tank, but just have a more effective role in these team fights compared to Denali. Yeah, it's like we said before, you, you know, especially now, you know, theoretically, as Cho'Gath gets tankier and Cho'Gath gets more under his belt, Trundle gets more to steal and Trundle gets more to really act with. And at least right now, as these fights go later, it really does come down to that. Subjugate makes him a very beefy frontliner. He has a Cinder Hulk ready. He has a Zeke's Convergence, which I'm not sure who he's tied that to. I believe that he's tied it up onto Urgot, if I see that correctly. And he's really trying to kind of use that together when they're both frontlining these fights. And it really just comes down to they have more means to jump onto the back line of the hunger. Yeah, definitely. So coming out of the pause, I mean, what does Vicious Hunger need to do to not fall too far behind in this game? Because they're still in it. They're definitely still in this one, although their lead has now gone to a 6k deficit. Yeah, I think what Vicious Hunger needs to do is that they really need to, you know, you know, they can't be split up like this. Like right now on the map, they're split up and they're getting caught out again. Yeah, as Denali's gonna take a lot of damage and the snipe out of Jin is gonna lock him down for a good minute here. And eventually, at some point, he's gonna go down and there it is, going down to Great Jace. Or sorry, Duck Solo on that Echo. And they're not really able to pursue on anybody else so far yet. But just the one kill is really, I mean, they're, they're just constantly showing Vicious Hunger that, guys, you can't hang with our team fight. Yeah, and this is probably going to be the Baron for Bangkok Ball Busters, you know, with that Zin down with no smite. Sure, they may have the Cho'Gath Feast, but they, they took down the Blast Plant, make sure Cho'Gath has no fast thing. And it looks as though, all right, Vicious Hunger is starting to respond. They're trying to position towards that Baron pit. So we'll have to see if they may make a play for it. Ooh, knock up on Urgot. Yeah, good knock up, but great chase. He is very tanky. He is going to be able to survive that. And the lockdown on Alistar is quickly uninterrupted. And two people, three people. Is there going to be four? As Gummy Bulls, he tries to run away, but he drops as well. And that's going to be a four for zero ace for Bangkok Ballbusters. And they're like, guys, this Baron's ours. Yep, that is going to be the Baron for Bangkok Ballbusters. They waited it out. They saw they saw the positioning, and they knew that they had the means to really start that fight. You know, no one on Vicious Hunger had even healed. No one had backed. No one, and they were still the same after that last team fight or skirmish, if you want to call it, where Denali died in the first place. And all it did was leave them vulnerable to a counter turn. Yeah, I mean, I, I really liked what it looked like Vicious Hunger was doing at the be before the fight even started. It looked like, hey, we know that BBB is going to Baron. Let's just push down the middle turret and try to get some gold out of this and then maybe go try to poke him a little bit. But as soon as they, I guess, realistically realized they were going for the Baron, they decided to turn and walk into that, you know, really tight zone. And just all the vision in the world is controlled by BBB right now. So there just really was not a chance for them to get any kind of pick or any kind of surprise attack. Yeah, Verinda here getting a little low. Yeah, Telios, he stepped forward to try to help his buddy out as the snipe comes through from Great Jace and the curtain call. And through all that, Duck Solo is the one that walks away with the kill. <laughs> Gets the double. Yeah, I was about I was about to say I think Vicious Hunger's main way into this game is them grouping as five, but they still haven't really done that. It seems that they've had a kind of the same con Ooh, hold on. <laughs> it's alright, man. These fights are normal now. They these fights are casual as we get two more kills now for Duck Solo and for Viper Fang. False Prophet, he's like, man guys, you go ahead, you take the inhib. I don't want any. But Yeah, I think this might even be the end. This might be game. Yeah, with those Baron Up minions, man, I don't see any chance coming out. We've got some decently long death timers as False Prophets decide to flash forward and then pull out, but he's not going to be able to survive. And now Telios, he's running in. He wants his last cause to be known as he tries to get some damage on a Duck Solo, but they're on the Nexus turret. They're, or sorry, the Nexus, and they're going to finish out this game with a nice 2-0 headed into the semifinals. Yeah, a bit, a, I think it's a bit of kind of lackluster play on the side of Vicious Hunger. I think that this game, their draft went much better. They had gummy balls on a bit more of a kind of a, a lane heavy pick. And, you know, they even had the mid lane be safe after that early gank and top lane seemed to be holding his own. But it really came down to once that, once that mid game started and, you know, even as we kind of got a little bit into the late game, they just never grouped. They never stayed as five units. They're, 
the joy of their comp is when Vladimir can get down the Hemo Plague and Cho can rupture and Zin kind of draws some frontline pressure and Caitlyn can kind of free hit. But they just never had that opportunity. They were never grouped. Someone was always too far forward. And at the end of the day, Bangkok had a perfect pick comp to just throw that advantage out the window. Yeah, man, definitely. So looking at the overall scope of this series, do you have an MVP in mind for the series? I I think the MVP has to go to Great Jace, honestly. I'm a little bit tempted to say Duck Solo because I think you know he definitely had a lot more damage, a lot more potential, but just Great Jace on that ERGOT both games, really drawing a lot of frontline pressure. He knew who to go on. He knew when to go in. He didn't kind of overdive and overestimate his damage or overestimate his tankiness. I think he just kept everything solid, kept team fights controlled. I think he just knew exactly what he was doing throughout the series. I absolutely agree with you. I, I think there was a lot of standout from the side of Bangkok Ballbusters. I think Bliss played an excellent series. I think that Duck Solo played his champions fantastically and did the damage he needed to. He played his role perfectly. But Grace Chase, Great Jace really did stand out as just this very consistent figure in every fight and every aspect of the games. So uh, I'd have to give it to Great Jace as well. Yeah, I think so. And then, and then the other interesting thing is that when you look at the when you look at the vision score for both of these teams, it seems as though both of these teams were pretty even. So both of these teams, you know, knew you know how to have proper map pressure, how to keep the vision around. But like I said, I think just the main difference just came down to position. I think, and again, both games. Vicious Hunger had a much bigger tendency for someone to step forward, someone to be out of position while the other while the other team was kind of, you know, either held back or somewhere else on the map. And just Bangkok knew that if they stayed as five, if they waited for that pick opportunity, that they would really be able to come out on top. And I think that that's what won them the series, hands down. Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys enjoyed this cast, be sure to turn in next week when we cast the semifinal matches for the Abyssal League. We will be back live again on... Thursday, actually, we'll be live here on this channel tomorrow with some games from one of our other partners, the Overdrive League. So if you'd like to just see some more good amateur league games, be sure to tune in on there. And if you can't tune in tomorrow night, just check out the Community Hub. There's always going to be some information on there whenever we're casting, whenever we're streaming any of these great amateur league games. But for us tonight, I was Kaiser. Andrew, thank you for joining me tonight. And we are going to go ahead and sign off. Always happy to be here. Have a great night, folks.